to better understand our world, ourselves, and our future. This program is made possible by the people of Chevron. Chevron, giving thought to television. They're independent, they're affectionate, they're loyal, they're beautiful, they're sagacious, they're mysterious, they're ineffable, they're inscrutable. They don't want to seem to um, have to be a part of you. They like to sort of suggest that they don't need you. Cats are magic. They really are magic. Uh, probably the most mysterious creatures in the world. But they're also very vicious. Um, they're very cool things. I suppose that's another thing I like about them, their, their ability to be one thing and then another. The domestic cat harbors a sort of split personality. Within even the most demure pussycat lurks a creature of the wild. Even after thousands of years, we still know little about the behavior of domestic cats. Now, scientists and laymen alike attempt to understand them, to demystify this elusive feline. For them, the domestic cat is every bit as intriguing to study as the lion or the tiger. To share one's life with a cat is to invite a bit of wildness indoors. Perhaps the writer was correct when he philosophized, God made the cat that man might have the pleasure of caressing the tiger. Today, the Western world enjoys an unparalleled love affair between man and beast. The cat now surpasses the dog as the number one pet. And annually, we spend more on cat food than on baby food. On any weekend, proud owners display their pampered pets to thousands of fellow enthusiasts. Some three dozen breeds compete. Long hairs, short hairs, and some that seem to have no hair. There are nearly 58 million pet cats in the United States alone. While many are common alley cats of little monetary value, some exotic breeds sell for as much as $3,000. And although many people dislike and distrust cats, a far greater number adore and indulge them. Keeping cats and their owners happy has become a major industry. It's extremely durable. Okay, it's synthetic fur. Look at the beads in the middle there. You see the beads? Oh, yeah. Okay, listen. You hear that little scratchy sound? <laughs> Drives the cats crazy. They love it. This is one of our kitty condos. We have a birthing yeah. area or a litter area. Kitty pan comes down on the bottom. It's made of solid wood construction, stain-resistant carpeting, 
All right, are you tired of rubber mice? We got something better than rubber mice. Video catnip for the couch potato cat in your life. The cat, as you can see, has a tubular body. Everything is in line. It's got the long body, the long tail, the long head to go with the rest of the body, long bone. The people keep him in wonderful condition because he's very muscular. He's not skinny at all. He's just slim and hard, like an athlete. Like a specter floating from the mists of prehistory into the shadows of modern times, two species of wildcats still prowl parts of Africa and Europe. Presumed to be the ancestors of today's house cat, they even look like tabbies. But wildcats are fierce and formidable animals, in no way tame. In ancient times, many became tame when farmers fed and sheltered them as valued rodent killers. The farmers were Egyptian. The time, more than 3,000 years ago. The cat became adored and revered in Egypt. Never since has the cat's honored role been matched anywhere in the world. One goddess in the form of a cat symbolized pleasure, fertility, and maternity. Cats were also associated with the deity believed to start the sun on its daily course, and one who symbolized life itself. The Brooklyn Museum maintains one of the world's finest Egyptian collections. Its curator is archaeologist Richard Fazzini. He divides his time between ancient ruins and ancient artifacts. Prized in any such collection is a cat mummy, embalmed as were the ancient pharaohs themselves. This pussy cat has been this way since, well, he's hard to date, but let's say at least 2,300 to 2,500 years. Now, why, you might ask, did the Egyptians mummify animals? Well, because certain gods could appear in the form of certain animals. And so it could be a pious gesture or part of some cult ritual to present a mummified cat to place it in a temple or to place it in one of the, the great animal cemeteries. Uh, it is possible in the case of uh, animals such as cats that an animal mummy might also be uh, a cat which has been ritually murdered. Uh, because most of the animal mummies of cats that have been examined tend to be very young cats. So a cat that was raised for the temple, not somebody's favorite pet. A cat that was raised for the purpose and killed for the purpose and placed in a coffin of some sort. But the heyday of the cat was to pass. Once sacred, the cat would come to be hated and scorned. The same eyes perceived as the throne of the gods became feared as the seat of the devil. Believed by many to be the companions of witches, thousands of cats were tortured, burned, and hanged as recently as colonial times in America. Veterinarian Michael Fox is vice president of the Humane Society of the United States. He writes extensively on cat behavior and human-cat relationships. It is intriguing that cats have been revered in history and persecuted. There was one pope who uh, had all cats killed. Uh, this love-hate relationship, I think, reflects an aspect of the, the dualistic psyche of human beings. We love things conditionally. We love them if we can control them and they will bend to our will. Or we love them because they're mysterious. 
that they're an aspect of uh, nature's wildness, which the cat embodies. The domestic cat is but one of 38 species of cats, most of them astonishingly alike. Take away their spots or stripes, their short or long fur, disregard the differences in size from four pounds to more than 600, and a cat is a cat is a cat. Few pet owners are aware that most of the behaviors of their house cat have a parallel somewhere in the wild. The cat is an enchanting combination of beauty and utility. Its sinuous movements delight the eye. Cats get some of their suppleness from their shoulder joints, which are so constructed that they can shift the front legs freely in almost any direction. They have almost no collarbone and an exceptionally limber spine. Ever fluid and graceful, cats are marvels of strength and balance. All cats advertise their territory. Spraying deposits a pungent scent. Scratch marks are visual signals and may also carry a scent from glands in the paws. Glands on the face and tail deposit scents at home, just as in the wild. Sometimes more than one signal is left. Territorial fights could be deadly between animals with such sharp teeth and claws. So most disputes are settled by body postures and intimidating bluffs. Friendly greetings are generally more fleeting and subtle. A nose touch or body rubbing. Exactly how and why cats purr remains a mystery. We do know that both purring and kneading with the paws first appear in infancy to stimulate the mother's milk to flow. Being hunters, cats must conserve energy whenever possible. They snooze about two thirds of the time, but always remain alert to sounds. Hence the term cat 